The Dow dropping today, closing down around 725 points. It started slipping at the opening bell and never looked back. At one point, hovering around 1,000 points in the red. Today marks the biggest drop so far this year. The sell-off fueled by growing fear of the COVID-19 Delta variant and the alarming rise in cases everywhere in the U.S. due to so many millions of Americans not getting vaccinated. Investors are afraid the surge in the virus will hurt the U.S. economic recovery. Airlines such as United, Delta, and American were hit especially hard today, as well as other companies tied to the economic recovery, such as General Motors and Caterpillar. With this brings us to our health lead and the dire warnings from public health officials, cases, hospitalizations, and deaths all up in the United States. 99.5% of the deaths are among people who are not fully vaccinated, 99.5% of them. The U.S. Surgeon General says he's still worried about what's to come. All of this, the result of that dangerous new Delta strain, as well as lagging vaccination rates and misinformation, lies about the vaccine running rampant. And now we're learning American athletes are among those testing positive in connection with the Olympic Games in Tokyo, including a member of the U.S. women's gymnastics team just four days before the opening ceremonies. Now, we should note this athlete is fully vaccinated, and her father says, thankfully, she has no symptoms, but the case does highlight the perniciousness of the Delta strain and the need to get vaccination rates higher. We're covering this story from both sides of the world. Will Ripley's on the ground in Tokyo for us, but let's start with Erica Hill right here in the States. And Erica, you have details about new mask guidance for kids returning to school. What is it? Yeah, that's right. New guidance for schools just out today from the American Academy of Pediatrics, which recommends that all students ages two and over and staff continue to mask up in schools regardless of vaccination status. And one of the reasons they cite is the large number of the student population, all those under 12, who are not yet eligible for the vaccine. It's important to note, though, Jake, this is where we see a differ with the CDC. Its school guidance recommended that fully vaccinated students and staff didn't need to continue masking. Up, and it's just the latest example of where there are new questions about some of that CDC guidance. On the street, it's impossible to see the difference, but in the hospital, it's clear. Those that are hospitalized are those who are unvaccinated. Nationwide, 97% of COVID patients in the hospital right now are not vaccinated. Nearly every COVID death also unvaccinated. Most people will either get vaccinated or have been previously infected, or they will get this Delta variant. And for most people who get this Delta variant, it's going to be the most serious virus that they get in their lifetime. The Delta-fueled spikes getting worse. Average new cases topping 32,000, up 145% in just the last two weeks. In that same period, hospitalizations rising 50%, deaths 12%. I am worried about what is to come. Less than half the country is fully vaccinated. And the president's goal of one shot for at least 70% of adults still not met more than two weeks after the July 4th deadline. In fact, 15 states have yet to hit 60%. In Mississippi, it's less than half. If we don't get a significant proportion of these recalcitrant people vaccinated, you're going to be seeing a smoldering of this outbreak in our country for a considerable period of time. With kids under 12 still not eligible for the vaccine, the American Academy of Pediatrics recommending Monday all students two and older and staff should continue to wear masks at school. The former Surgeon General urging the CDC to hit the reset button on its guidance, tweeting the agency should advise Americans to, quote, vax it and mask it in areas with rising cases. And President Joe Biden Monday seeking to clarify his view on Facebook's role in the spread of misinformation. Mr. President, you said last week that companies and platforms like Facebook are killing people. Facebook isn't killing people. These 12 people are out there giving misinformation. Anyone listening to it is getting hurt by it. It's killing people. It's bad information. My hope is that Facebook, instead of taking it personally, that somehow I'm saying Facebook is killing people, that they would do something about the misinformation. But with so much misinformation, concern growing that hope may be too little, too late. 
One more note on masks here in New York City. City Mayor Bill de Blasio was asked again today about the possibility of a mask mandate returning to the city. He said the focus right now, Jake, is on vaccinations, noting that masks do work, but in his words, they don't get to the root of the problem. As of today, according to the city, just over 53% of the total population of New York City is now fully vaccinated. Jake? All right, Erica Hill, thanks so much. In Tokyo, the number of COVID-19 cases linked to the Olympic Games is now 61 including some athletes who were already living in the Olympic Village. Let's bring in CNN's Will Ripley live for us from Tokyo. Will, the games are set to start Friday. What are officials there saying about the growing number of COVID cases? They're downplaying it, Jake. They're pointing out that more than 22,000 people have arrived here in Japan, and that number, 61, is actually even smaller in their view because more than half of those 61 are residents of Japan working on the games. Now, the other 28 or so cases were identified either caught at the airport or in COVID testing, like that U.S. gymnast, uh, Kara Aker from Kansas City, uh, the Kansas City area, whose father says she was fully vaccinated when she tested positive at her pre training camp outside of Tokyo. Here's what he says she's going through right now. I know she's disappointed, but uh, at this point, she's just. Uh... She said she's kind of bored because she's stuck in her room, not being able to do anything. She can't practice or anything like that. So she says she's bored and just looking forward to coming home. Um, I, I don't think, uh, like I said, the biggest disappointment is that, you know, this takes her out of it completely. Several high-profile athletes have had to drop out of the games now after testing positive or due to COVID protocols, including 17-year-old American tennis star Corey Coco Goff. She didn't arrive here in Japan when she got that positive test. But the concern is that this densely packed athlete's village, where sometimes there are eight people sharing a small apartment with four people to a bathroom, could be a breeding ground for a COVID outbreak. And that's why athletes are being tested every day. They're told they have to wear masks at all times, except when they're training and competing and eating and drinking. So obviously there's still a chance for things to be spread in that uh, stage, Jake. You know, one health expert was saying that Japan's plan is based on what we knew about COVID a year ago, but the Delta variant has really changed the game. And that is raising fears of a super spreader event here. All right, Will Ripley, thank you so much. Live for us from Tokyo. Let's discuss all this with Dr. Ashish Jha. He's the dean of Brown University School of Public Health. Dr. Jha, let's start uh, in Tokyo. More than 60 people, 61 is our latest number, have tested positive in connection to the Olympics. We should note, we do not know of the 61 people, whether they have symptoms, whether they're sick, just that they've tested positive. Is this better, worse, or about what you expected when uh, it comes to caseloads at the Olympics? Yeah, Jake, so thanks for having me back. It, it's about what I was expecting. Uh, I was hoping it would be better. Uh, we still have four days to go before the, the games began. And I think a lot of us are worried, given how many unvaccinated people there are at Olympic Stadium or Olympic Village, uh, that you're going to see more spread of this virus in the days and weeks ahead. And there's no requirement uh, that athletes get vaccinated. Uh, if First Lady Jill Biden is headed to Tokyo on Wednesday, would you advise her not to go, given what we're seeing? No, if she's vaccinated and everybody around her is vaccinated and they practice some basic uh, public health measures and you know avoid large crowds, they, uh, she'll be fine. Uh, what I'm really worried about is all those unvaccinated uh, athletes and others who really are at risk being in that place. Here in the States, nearly all of the COVID cases, hospitalizations and deaths we're seeing are from unvaccinated people. I think it's like 97% of hospitalizations, 99.5% of COVID deaths. Uh, we're hearing about more breakthrough cases. The U.S. gymnast, just one example. Um, should vaccinated people be concerned? So largely, no. I mean, look, largely, if you're a vaccinated person, you may get a breakthrough infection. You may feel lousy for a couple of days. But the concern comes from that hospitalization and death that we've all feared from this virus. And you are protected from that from the vaccine. So I think you should not be uh, concerned, and we've really got to put all of our efforts on getting more people vaccinated. Biden has been um, singling out Facebook's role uh, in how COVID misinformation is uh, spreading. Today, he clarified to say it's it's. He looked at this one study from this digital group that that noted that a majority of the misinformation on the vaccines come from 12 people, including Robert Kennedy Jr., who continues spreading lies about vaccines. What do you think is the best way to combat misinformation? 
Yeah, this is this is the plague of our times. Um, I do think Facebook has a much bigger responsibility. Uh, look, if if this group knows that it's the twelve, Facebook has known for a long time it's these twelve. Uh, they don't have to give them a platform. You don't have to give a platform to people who spread lies in the middle of a global pandemic. Like there's, Facebook could just do that. They have chosen not to. So I think Facebook could do that. I think other social media platforms should be doing more. Uh, Deplatforming people who are actively trying to get people killed seems to me to be a pretty reasonable strategy at this moment.